Okay, this is transmedia talk number two, and we're going to talk about the core of the story. So when you are writing, you don't necessarily write to think about transmedia and how you're going to push it out. You don't necessarily consider yourself a marketer when you're a writer or screenwriter. So it, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you can write a story for transmedia purposes. And today's world, when you are marketing, transmedia should be one of the things you think about front and center, if unless you're just writing the story for yourself. So let's talk about the core of the story. It, it, like any other writing material, whatever motivates you to write um, on a certain topic, you know, that, that's a, that doesn't really matter. But when it comes to from a transmedia standpoint, when you are looking at the story, everything you do from a transmedia standpoint evolves around the story. So you're looking at the experience of the reader or the viewer as it pertains to the story. Henry Jenkins, um, and you can go to henryjenkins.org. He's a, he's a really good resource on transmedia. He, um, he describes it like this, a process where integral elements of a fiction get dispersed systematically across multiple delivery channels for the purpose of creating a unified and coordinated entertainment experience. So essentially, there are two sides to, uh, to looking at a transmedia story. One is your marketing strategy. How are you going to push this out? How are you going to bring the um, eyeballs to this story? And two, crowdsourcing your fans. And you've seen it in a lot of uh, pop culture, uh, games, movies, and even music videos where uh, the fans create their own spin-offs of the story. So those are the two elements that you look at when you're creating a transmedia story or a story for transmedia rather, is the marketing strategy and how you're going to crowdsource your fans. And there's so many ways to develop the story on various platforms. You're looking at apps, books, social media, music, downloads, merchandising, everything to this Batman coffee cup. You can create so many different uh, spin-offs that culminate to the, the single story. So let's um, uh, dive into that a little deeper. With respect to the story, you um, have to kind of take a look at the narration of the story. How are you going to narrate it? And what genre is it going to address? Are you looking at a story that is for like a Hannah Montana age group where you're looking at what they call tweens, the tween levels. So there's different strategies involved depending on the genre. And you would kind of take a look at how the narration would fit that genre. And each genre, sometimes you've got a story that might fit more than one genre or more than one demographic. So you have to look at how the narrative fits those individual demographics. How do the characters interact with each other and how do they relate to the story? When, where does everything take place? Is, is your transmedia story going to be fictional? purely fictional are you going to when you when you're branching it out into the other platforms is it just going to be purely fictional 
or are you going to bring the real world into play? If you haven't seen it um, on my YouTube channel, there is a, I think it's in the public settings and my favorites are in under transmedia. There is a video that describes the transmedia push out for the dark night. And there's also one for the Dexter um, TV show. Those are two excellent uh, over the top examples of how you can spread your story through transmedia and what they've done in in a great way in those two examples is taking the fictional story and also pulling real life into it so they had all sorts of contests they 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 got people involved at such a scale well they are popular shows but they've got people involved at such a scale to um to move that narrative off screen that it was a powerful um promotion for it but transmedia doesn't have to be just for the pre-promotion or promotion when the um, story is out after the story is done, after it's finished from the box office, after the book is off the shelf, after there's a gazillion blogs in its place, you can still use the transmedia platforms to keep the story going. And sometimes your fans will do that for you. If, if it's polarizing enough, you'll have a crowdsource of fans that will create a whole whack of videos and memes and other types of uh, art forms to carry on your story with other narratives, with other endings, with other other developments that you may never have thought of. So it's it's a it's it's an area where there's no right or wrong way to do stuff. But what you need to do as a creative is to get creative and just you know the sky's the limit when it comes to creativity. So those, those are things to look at when you're developing your story. And I'll give you an example of, of a poem. It's in the public domain. And I actually have a blog post about this. It's Lieutenant John McRae's poem in Flanders Field. And in Flanders Field is a poem that we read, we remember, on Remembrance Day and Veterans Day, it, it kind of is the example of that day. It, it represents that day in, in memory of our veterans. And John McRae was a uh, surgeon in the Canadian Army during World War I. And he, he died of pneumonia at the end of the war, but his poem has lived on and it has resonated. I, I remember when I was in um, elementary school, we memorized that poem. That was that was something that we would recite every November 11th was uh, in Flanders Field. So I'm going to read a couple of stanzas from the poem. And then I'll talk a little more about how this poem can be driven through transmedia. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. So we know that there is elements to expand this story with. So it's war, so you've got international politics involved. Battlefields. You can take the battlefields further and, and look at the personal elements on the battlefield. There's a movie, Stalingrad, which is a really good example of one-on-one -on -one combat and what it really looks like to be right inside one of those battlegrounds when it's in, in an urban setting. So you can look at the towns that some of these soldiers roll through. 
you can look at the mascots they adopt in their in their regiments death death is always around war and that's certainly what the poem uh, portrays history is honor uh, sacrifice what do uh, the families what do the soldiers what do countries sacrifice to go to war uh, you could take a look at this and many other war poems and put them all together poppies is a theme in this poem graveyards grave diggers people left behind larks and other birds and other witnesses to what is happening on the battlefield that we that may not necessarily be human guns and gunnery so these are a handful of topics that this poem can spread out to so when we talk about when when Henry Jenkins talks about dispersing systematically across multiple delivery platforms and creating a unified coordinated entertainment experience so we we have the experience of the story and and on YouTube there is various ways people have interpreted the poem in reciting it and visual uh, visual ways so there's your fan crowdsourcing on YouTube with this poem so if you go in and take in key in in Flanders field you're going to find a, a wealth of uh, videos to about this poem so that's one way there's uh, YouTube you could do radio podcasts on any of these topics and research and develop some of these topics a little further they still expand the story because if you what is Flanders Field so it talks about a little bit in the poem but you can take that a little further and expand on it through the various platforms that we have available You can simulcast. If I was on a um, radio show now, I could probably, if I had more than one device, I could be Google Hangouting now as well as using this blab. This will also go on uh, my YouTube channel too, but in, you can simulcast your, your broadcast, but that sort of transmedia that's taking the same broadcast and spreading it, but it's just one little snippet. So you want to uh, also take a look at maybe you could blog about larks, blog about um, the different uh, witnesses that were in the battlefield that we don't ever think of. And what happens to nature when a battlefield takes place. You can use a Pinterest board for the visual aspects so you can hunt down various you have a board of poppies and all sorts of images of poppies um, instagram there's so many ways to take the elements of the story oh what is this about it's about transmedia storytelling and how to integrate your story and move it to other platforms and expand on it. So the, um, uh, in answer to your, your question, it's, it's, uh, um, take bringing the audience into the story and, and, and making them experience it more directly than as opposed to just reading and watching, a, reading a book, reading a poem and watching a film. So, I was just explaining the um, in Flanders Field and how you could how it breaks down into other elements. So if you take the stanzas and and you've got battlefields, death, history, all these different elements, and you can actually expand that story through podcasts and even visual Pinterest boards, Instagram, and take that even further. So you're not telling the same story over and over again. You're just taking different elements of it and 
and maybe educating people further. Now that's, that is kind of a uh, quasi fiction, um, nonfiction poem in a way, but you could do it in just about any genre, any, any topic, any heck, even any business. And uh, if, you know, you can name a business and you can break a business down into different elements as well. Um, if it's manufacturing, you've got the people in the plant, you've got the different uh, machineries that put the products together. And you can break all these things down into various elements and then create external media that expand on the education of that or even just make it fun. Um, like I say, in the um, couple of examples that are really, really good are the the transmedia uh, push outs for the Dexter TV show and for the Dark Knight, which, I mean, that's where you have an unlimited budget, but still you can get really good ideas from looking at other people's examples. And, and I just plucked the in Flanders fields out of, out of the air when I, when I thought about it, but I can take just about any story, any topic and do the same thing and break it down into different elements and characters and then figure out how those characters interplay with each other and how you can branch them out into other media and make your story live on and on and on. So it, it is, there's no time. Uh, I mean, you'll have a time capsule for, for the, uh, marketing push out for when you want to actually launch it but there really is no time capsule to keep the story going into infinity so um i think that's about it for the core of the story unless somebody wants to come on and uh ask some more questions and next week i um i'm going to break down the um audience experience and the different ways that you can get an audience to participate in your story. So we'll, we'll look at that. And uh, so if nobody has any more questions and, or doesn't want to come on, I will sign off and I'll have the uh, um, archives of this on my YouTube channel. Thanks.